eight feet away. I threw my arms up like you do. And that was the only bit that got hit. Mm -hmm. Now, that was the version that sounds sensible, doesn't it? Actually, you know, that's that's hard to dispute. Um, you see the blood on her. It's more than what got on. He was wearing the white thing. How come he didn't take the white thing off? That's funny. Well, he was he wearing the white jacket at the, uh, at the House of Blues. I imagine he took it off, mm. uh, but it is the one that he was wearing. Right, and, right. Yeah, I mean, obviously it had her DNA on it. So right, that. right. I mean, I, he I, didn't ever use the pretending to give the, blunt, the gun a blowjob story? And it accidentally went off? That's that, more believable. That was a story that was going around, and that's what I heard um, was going to be his defense before I met him. Because I, I could half buy that just hearing it. You know, that's well, one of those I, stupid I don't things. I want to badmouth Lana Clarkson, right. you know, especially after doing the Elroy film, being very sensitive to the way people talk about dead women, right? But. Um, I'm not trying to be. Of, be well, no, uh, I'm not saying you are, but because I'm about to say something controversial. That's oh. why I'm saying this. Hmm. Uh, there were stories going around about her having a party trick about filleting a loaded gun. And you must have heard them too. Everyone in Hollywood. I have never heard it. Okay. Um, they wanted to bring that in evidence in some way, and the judge said it was just, uh, as far as I remember, and I'm getting sketchy here, uh, because as you can tell from the film, my job wasn't to argue the case, but there was all this details that the judge wouldn't allow certain things in evidence, which seemed to be just character assessment, right. you know, stuff like that. You got five yeah. minutes. <laughs> yeah. um, so the, the, the best defense would have been to say, we were doing sexual gunplay, and right. she, she was playing with the gun and it went off. But he kept maintaining she killed herself. And I began thinking that is such a crazy defense because everyone knows that Phil's a gun nut. Mm. Uh, the prosecution's going to be, in the absence of defining science, is mm. going to be arguing that this is a pattern of behavior he's always been doing. Sure. So it's a small, <coughs> small step. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, to go to it actually going off. Did the, the but, prosecution? But he argued that, 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 they were trying to establish that she was right. depressed, yeah. she was uh, bombed, and uh, she shot herself. And and I just decided to step back from all of that, mm. because I do believe, and I'll say this on record, mm. that there is a reasonable doubt. Yeah. I think that the jury was correctly hung the first time through. I didn't go to the second trial. Mm. Um, but that wasn't my interest. I just tried to get what the ma broad brush strokes of what the defense's position was right. and broad brush strokes about the prosecution's. And the prosecution's is very much, here's a pattern of behavior. Mm. The defense's was, where's the sign? Can I, can I shift completely yeah. over in, if, in case he enforces that five minutes? No, no we've got to keep talking. Uh, talking to you, why is it that you can't, to this day, uh, by um, walking in the rain on iTunes and other songs? You know, I have no idea, but I was told a couple of days ago that all this stuff is out of print. And but why wouldn't Phil, the shrewd businessman, doesn't he profit from the sale of these things? I would think he would, but I have no idea about how Phil conducts his business. He's smart enough to have retained rights, hasn't he, to these songs? Um, historically, and what Mick Brown's book says is, you know, he, 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 he created the precedent of owning your own music. You right. know? And, but then his enemies and people who criticize his, his career right. say that he also made a point out of owning other people's music. Uh -huh. you know, the way he, yeah. But again, I don't know that shit. I don't even know about it. I, I'm not actually interested. I don't know why he can't get the music. But you, you, there's so many different ways you could do a documentary about Phil. How about, can I just, yeah. what about the, just on the commercial thing? Why didn't you guys talk about a Agony of the Ecstasy Phil Spector CD? I would want to buy that. I mean, that's a new way of putting think, him on the market. I think, I think that the music in the film would make a fantastic soundtrack. Yeah. I think the film would be a fantastic musical. I also think that the chances are that Lana Clarkson's family will get a civil judgment like, like O.J.'s did. Uh -huh. And that um, it would be a good way for them to earn money if it was, a, you know... Yeah. Or Phil could, I mean, I, I don't know, because I, I never thought that far. All I thought was, this guy had an amazing cavalcade of hits right. that shaped a generation's music. Right. And the Beatles put him out of business because it made that kind of music. And then a couple of years later, he's producing Let It Be. Right. I mean, and I just thought, what an incredible thing. Let me aggregate all of that and make the audience understand what a producer does and what Phil's achievement was. But let me also counterpoint that all the way through with the fact that he's on trial for murder. And let me let Phil be Phil. 
Let him say anything mm-hmm. as nutty as he can. Right. But let me also show that he's hilarious in a, in a, in a definite way, not like in an unintentionally hilarious. Mm-hmm. He's a really good storyteller. He's got really interesting stories to tell. He's a little economical with the truth. But whenever has a filmmaker, it happened a few times, of course, but what a thing for a filmmaker to have the luck to be able to get right inside a larger-than-life character right. whose brain is squirming like a toad, <laughs> you know, the doors line. Right. But in the process is churning out music that is fantastic music, fantastically influential as well. Mm. And then you go one level deeper in and you realize that some of the madness that's in the music... Listen to River Deep Mountain High a few times. And... and Listen to Woman is Nigger of the World, mm. you know, and that's why I shot that crazy, se- I, I cut that crazy sequence right. to it. Right. I mean, that was my interest. Not, you know, why isn't he selling it on iTunes and not did he kill her or not. Right. My interest was what's the connection between the artist and the man. Right. And the man is defined by the trial and the art is defined by the music. And, and I only had four components. I had film mm. talking. And right. it's amazing him talking. He refused to talk to filmmakers for 50 years. I got in, right? Uh, and he's been really himself. There's, there's no barriers, right? Secondly, the music. Hmm. And celebrate the music and have the audience re-understand it in a different way. Third is the trial. Right. And the fourth is Mick Brown's commentary to give us some critical understanding of, of, of how the music works. Sure. And I thought, let me see if I can do a very, very simple construction and make a really great film mm. that way. And I mm. think it works, I mean. It definitely works, man. I'm, I, I, in fact, I want to go see it. I've never seen it on a big screen. I want oh, to see come it. on Wednesday or Thursday and stick for the Q&A because, you know, I'm good at Q&As. But I will. I, I think I did him honor, mm-hmm. but I also think I didn't blink at the fact that he is not a lovable guy. He's probably a bad guy. I'm not certain he killed Lana Clarkson, but as a filmmaker... I can't believe that he deliberately just pulled the trigger. He might have, let's allow, maybe, but it had to be one of those stupid accidental things. Well, he told he me that, that, that he was offered like to cop a plea, and again, you never know whether it's Eight true. years? He told me that he was, uh, he offered to cop a, they offered him a plea bargain. Mm, mm. Eight years for accidental manslaughter, mm. but the judge said on top of that he would add the California extra thing for for use of a firearm, ah. and that added ten years. So he was going to get eighteen years, and he said, "Fuck that." The judge really didn't like him, did he? I mean, that seems to be a fair uh, observation given. Uh, you know, the New York Times did a piece last week about the judge and all the alleg because you know he's also involved in the Polanski trial and Marina's film. Right? I didn't know that. Oh yeah, and uh, I don't know. He's very well respected. I uh-huh. very much got the impression that he was trying to run a courtroom that did go a mock like Lance Edo's did. Uh-huh. With, with OJ's, right. but at the same time, I didn't think he was. Um, uh, you can't second just guess the judge, but I right. did think he was allowing the defense to make its full case, and that's sad. Okay.